Hey guys, it's Augie, and welcome to our first Japanese lesson on the channel. Today we're going to be learning about the difference between wa and ga. Although this might seem like really simple and basic Japanese, it's actually very advanced and one of the most difficult aspects of the Japanese language that most people either get wrong or can't correctly explain. Make sure to watch to the end so you don't miss out on any nuances. There's a few. Alright, for those of you who don't know, wa and ga are just two of the several particles that exist in the Japanese language that are used to string sentences together. Wa and ga both translate to a kind of is or am, depending on the noun or pronoun, and despite what you might think, the basic functions of these particles differ quite a lot and their roles can greatly vary in a sentence. So before we can start using wa and ga correctly in sentences, we need to first differentiate them. Let's begin by defining the basic functions of wa and ga. To do this, I'm going to use the following sentence as an example. The manager will use this room in the afternoon, or this room will be used by the manager in the afternoon. In this sentence, the wa in kono hea wa indicates the subject or what we're talking about, and the ga in this sentence indicates the nominative case or the core of the action or situation. Sorry to bring out the big words on you, but the nominative case basically refers to the noun or pronoun, in our case the noun, that appears as the subject of a verb in a particular sentence. Basically, the nominative case states that the specific noun or pronoun is the subject of the sentence. So, kacho is our noun and tsukau is our verb in our example sentence. Who's going to use the room? The manager is going to use the room. Kacho ga tsukau. Okay, but wait a minute. You might be thinking, Agi, why would we use wa instead of o, for example? Why use wa instead of other particles? Well, here's the thing. You can use wo. It's technically grammatically correct. However, the reason why you need to use wa is because it's emphasizing that the big boss man, the manager, is going to use the room and not anyone else. You can use wo, but it's not strong enough. The speaker is telling you everyone else must stay out. Now that we have the basic functions of wa and ga down, let's learn how to use each of them in a sentence. So when using wa and ga in a sentence, it's extremely important to discern how each is used depending on the context and situation. The most common usage of ga that you probably know is using them to emphasize something or someone. For example, if someone is pointing to a book and asking you if this is your book, これはあなたの本ですか But it's not your book, and your book is actually the one next to it, you can say, いいえ、これが私の本です。No, this is my book, and point to the one next to it. Another example can be when someone is asking who will be the leader of a project. リーダーは誰になりますか You can say, 僕がやります。I will do it. Using ga as an emphasizer is only one of its usages. What most people don't explain is why we use wa and ga and when we know it's appropriate. Let's take a closer look at the basic usage of wa and ga in a sentence. Ga indicates a topic that is new to the reader or one that is considered unidentifiable to the reader, so something they have never heard of or they can't identify. Wa, on the other hand, is the opposite. And indicates what has already been mentioned in the subject or what can be considered identifiable to the reader. In contrast to ga, which indicates a topic that is new to the reader and unidentifiable, wa is something that the reader is already aware of because they've seen or heard it somewhere and they can easily identify it. Let's look at an example. There is a tourist spot called Ose in northern Kanto. My mother thinks of this place as her hometown and goes there every year. She is good friends with the woman who owns the mountain cottage. She manages the place by herself. I heard there are five young workers. 大勢の人がこの地を訪れるが、中にこの山小屋で働きたいと申し出る人がいる。Every year, many people visit this area, but amongst them, there are people who say they want to work at the cottage. 五人は特にその希望が強かったらしい。Apparently, the five employees currently working there really wanted to work there. 
Okay, so let's break this down bit by bit, looking at the usage of ga first. Ose toyu kankochi. The tourist spot called Ose is a topic that is new to the reader. It's something they haven't heard or seen yet. So ga will be used, making the sentence Kanto hokubu ni Ose toyu kankochi ga aru. Now, what other time is ga used? It's used when the subject is unidentifiable to the reader. In the sentence, are subjects that the reader can't identify yet because they haven't been mentioned up until now. This is why we use ga and say and because the reader is unaware of these people. Now that we've seen how ga is used when the topic is new or unidentifiable to the reader, let's now look at how wa is used in comparison. Because the woman owner was the subject mentioned before in the previous sentence, Yamakoya no onna shujin to shitashii no da. The next sentence, Kanojo wa ima hitori de koya o kirimori shite iru. That uses wa instead of ga is correct because the subject, Yamakoya no onna shujin, has already been mentioned. So the reader knows who Kanojo is based on the context. Therefore, we use wa, Kanojo wa, instead of Kanojo ga. We said before that wa is also used to indicate a subject or topic that is identifiable to the reader. Well, if we look at the sentence, Aha wa koko o jibun no furusato no yo ni omotte iru rashiku, maitoshi dekakete iku. In the example, we notice that wa is being used after haha or mother. Koko or this place is mentioned after haha and they used koko instead of ose to yu kankochi because using this again in the sentence right after would be redundant. Koko represents the subject that is already identifiable to the reader, which is ose to yu kankochi. By using koko here, it allows the writer to place wa after haha instead of ga because koko refers to the topic the reader can identify. Similarly, with koya no jūgyō in wa gonin wakai hito tachi da so da, the koya no jūgyō in or the cottage employees becomes a subject that is already identifiable to the reader because gonin wakai hito tachi, five young people, is mentioned right after showing that the cottage employees are made up of five people. This is why we need to put a wa after koya no jūgyō in instead of ga because this is something that is identifiable to the reader. Okay, so that was the basic usages of wa and ga with example sentences. But wait, we're not done. In addition to the basic usages, there are two main nuances when using ga and wa. To make it easy, we'll name them nuance A and nuance B. Okay, first is nuance A. You can use wa even when the topic is new to the reader. Wait, what? But I thought you said only ga indicates when a topic is new to the reader. Well, guess what? Nuances, baby. Japanese is full of them. Okay, so when can you do this? Well, one, when it is a topic that many people are aware of or a topic that the reader would know. Two, when the topic is related to a topic that has already been mentioned. Or three, when comparing two things. All right, when it is a topic that many people are aware of or a topic that the reader would know. So, for example, in the sentence, Although many people are familiar with this famous landmark, there are some places that are not registered as World Heritage Sites. Mount Fuji is one example. Maybe the reader didn't know that this is not registered as a World Heritage Site, but Mount Fuji, Fujisang, is well known by almost everyone, so it doesn't matter. Even though the fact that it hasn't been registered yet is a new topic, Fujisang, Mount Fuji, is known by many people and therefore needs a wa after it instead of a ga. Next is when the new topic is related to a topic that has already been mentioned. For this one, we can use the example sentence, Ashita no sansha kaidan wa chūshi da so da. Tomorrow's three-party conference has been cancelled. The reason given is that the research on the topic has not been completed. This wa after ryu is justified because this ryu or reason is implying the reason why the conference is being cancelled. It is related to the previous mentioned topic, 明日の三者会談は中止, or the cancellation of the conference. Finally, we can also use wa even when the topic is new to the reader when comparing two things. For example, Hayashishi wa 
Tomeda. Mr. Hayashi's political philosophy is admirable, but his specific policies are unclear. Seiji Rinen, or political philosophy, and Gutai Tekina Seisaku, or specific policies, are two elements that are being compared in this sentence, so we don't need to use ga, even though the topics mentioned are new. Okay, next is nuance B. Did you know that you can also use ga, even though the topic has already been mentioned? But wait, Augie, I thought you said ga indicates when the topic is new. Well, you can, but only sometimes. Listen very closely, okay? You ready? This is only possible when either one, a new event begins, or when the flow changes from the previous sentence. Two, when a topic has been brought up with wa in a sentence, like something something wa, then something something ga. Or three, when an event is reported or when mentioning newsworthy topics. Let's look at number one, when a new event begins or when the flow changes from the previous sentence. For example, I'm actually taking this sentence from the Shinkansen Master book for N1 Grammar, but it goes like this. Aru kankochi de wakai fufu ga ryokan o keishiteita. Otto wa omo ni gaikou tekina shigoto. Tsuma wa shukaku kyaku no sewa o shiteita. Naka no ii fufu de heiwa na hibi ga tsuzuita. Aru toshi, otto ga totsuzen ryokan o toji o to ii dashita. In a tourist resort, a young couple ran an inn. The husband was mainly engaged in diplomatic work while the wife took care of the guests. They were a close couple and their days were peaceful. One year, the husband suddenly announced that he would close the inn. In this example, we see there's a young couple running an inn and it seems to be going well. And then all of a sudden, the husband out of nowhere announces that they will close the inn. Why did this happen? Why the sudden change? Well. Obviously, the flow changed drastically from the previous sentence, so this will make it okay to use ga to emphasize the sudden change, even though the topic has already been mentioned. The next time we can use ga, even though the topic has already been mentioned, is when a topic has been brought up with wa in a sentence, like something something wa, then something something ga. Also, just to note, when a topic is evident to both the reader and the writer, it may be shortened or abbreviated. For example, kyo. 午後から敬語の使い方についての研修会が行われた。今日の研修会は内容が盛りだくさんで終わったのは5時過ぎだった。This afternoon, a training session on the use of honorifics was held. There was a lot of content and it ended after 5 pm. Note that 今日の研修会は was abbreviated in this case, as mentioned before, because the topic is already evident to the reader and writer. This was abbreviated because it was implied. But if we leave it in the sentence, we see that wa was used after kenshu kai, which allows us to place ga after na yo instead of wa, even though the topic is already known, because the topic was brought up with wa already. Finally, when an event is reported or when mentioning newsworthy topics, you can use ga even though the topic is known, like in this example sentence. Kotoshi no sakura no kai ka wa sangatsu sanju nichi goro to hapyo sareta. It was announced that this year's cherry blossoms will bloom around March 30th. The bloom date is getting earlier every year. So, even though the Sakura no Kaika event was already mentioned just a few characters before, Ga is able to be used after Kaika bi because this event is being reported in a news fashion. Nuances suck, am I right? Okay, so I know that was a crap ton of information, but please go back and review certain sections again if you didn't grasp it the first time so you can get a full understanding of the differences between wa and ga, because this simple yet very advanced grammar point is essential to being able to speak and write Japanese properly. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this lesson was helpful. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested, check out what an inside of a $600 Tokyo apartment looks like in this video. Or also check out 5 reasons why you should move to Japan. Thanks! Bye!